overall playing in the mountains and snow. But it wasn't until he started college that he started to acquire interest in backcountry skiing and snowboarding. He's a senior in the um, outdoor, outdoor Studies program at APU. And when he graduates, he's going to be the first one in his family to graduate from university. And <laughs> so the other pretty cool thing is that you all are not Christian's first audience for this presentation. Christian presented this at ISSW in Innsbruck this year, which is pretty cool. So thanks, Christian. We're excited to see your presentation. Sweet. Uh, well, thanks for coming. Uh, this has been a pretty fun project to work on this last uh, year. It feels like almost two years now. Um, this has been a pretty fun project to work on the last year. It's been super informative and super cool to see all kinds of stuff. You know, as uh, technology keeps on continuing, it's fun to see what's coming into the backcountry and what, could, what is continuing to be used. Um, so I got super interested, uh, especially like, social media is super popular lately, especially for younger generations. So it's super cool to see how it's going to start in being introduced into the backcountry as more and more, you know, younger generations start getting involved. Um, so this is a super fun project. Um, this project is kind of uh, to illustrate the presence of social media and smartphones in the backcountry area um, in Hatcher Pass, Alaska. So yeah. So a lot of you guys are familiar with Hatcher Pass. It's a pretty popular backcountry ski area for snow machinists and backcountry skiers. Right over in the Taukina Mountains. It's really close to um, Anchorage. So it's about an hour's drive. Um, so it's very popular and very easy to get to. Um, it's managed by the state parks. So it's um, as well. And uh, Hatcher Pass Avalanche Center, HPAC, is their main source of avalanche information. Uh, it's 100% volunteer run and it's run by two forecasters. All right, so as I said, um, smartphones and social media are continuing to grow as years go on. Uh, earlier in this project, I found out that the US population is about 325 million people. Um, out of those people, about 77 report to have a smartphone, while about 66 report to have a social media account. It's even more present in younger populations. How does this thing work? Right there. Um, between the ages of 18 to 29 year olds, it's even more present with about 92% having a, uh, a sm uh, smartphone, while 81% report to have a social media account. So it's super crazy to see, you know, as, as mentioned earlier, it's increasing, increasing as years go on. Um, Facebook seems to be the most common out of all the uh, platforms, with Instagram coming in close with a lot of uh, individuals. And while non-related, um, backcountry skiing and snowboarding has also been very, has been increasing years. Back in the 2016-2017 season, about 7 million people reported to explore the backcountry. So that gave me a good idea to find out if these two will become merged or how they're merging throughout the years. So what I decided to do is I decided to go out to Hatch Pass on four different days, three days uh, in March and then a day in April. Um, it, uh, I separated into 20 questions that were separated into two sections. The first section was to find out just general background information about the people in the Hatcher Pass area, while the second one kind of talked about a little bit more of their social media and phone usage while in the backcountry. Um, a total of 65 people were, uh, were interviewed. Um, and the reason I chose Hatcher Pass is mostly because of its accessibility and the fact that it's super popular and how they use a little bit of social media to communicate with the people they serve. So this image right here, you can see Hatcher Pass is too, uh, it's not that pop, it's pretty low day versus up here, you can see it's a very packed day. That day was super hard to find parking and it was um, hard to keep track of how many people uh, were coming in and out of the area. So the general demographics of the people I interviewed kind of varied um, throughout. Uh, the majority of the people, so about 50 of them, came from the Independence Mine Trailhead. These individuals were stereotypically um, backcountry recreationalists, so skiers and snowboarders. Um, their age range varied, uh, the average age being about 34 years old, while the youngest individual I talked to was 13 and the oldest I talked to was 68. Um, the most common group size were about three to four, so it's cool, super cool to find out. Um, while at the Archangel Trailhead, um, which, which is one of the trailheads I talked to, 
These individuals were a little bit different. They were typically parents with a large amount of children, usually doing the road runs, um, which was completely different than obviously the people I was talking to at the other areas. Uh, their most common avalanche training was a level one, about 44%. However, this varied because some individuals had, uh, ex had just taken the class about a month ago or two months ago, while some people said they, the last time they took a class was about 15 years ago. So it showed just uh, the variance in education. While non-formal training came in second of about 32%. Um, then we asked individuals how they were getting the forecast. As I mentioned, um, Hatcher Pass does post on social media. This one right here is coming from their website. This one right here is coming from social media. They're both uh, the same. Um, we found out that the majority of the people checked the forecast. There's only 8% that did not check the forecast before heading out that day. Uh, the most common was still the website. It's probably going to be for as long as there is a forecast coming out. Um, however, 12% did mention that they went to Hatch Pass social media or that they went to a personal friend, like either checking each other's social medias as a forecast center um, to check what the conditions were. Um, then I asked individuals what would be their ideal way to receive information, and this also varied. It was, super, it was very interesting to find out. Um, I found out that a lot of people w would like to see an app, um, and about 18 would like to receive something personal to their phone, so either a text message or an email, um, and both of these are not currently available at Hatcher Pass, so that was fun to see. The website, as I said, is still popular. A lot of people love the website and go to it continuously, but that was a ni uh, nice little thing to learn about and find out. Um, then I asked individuals how they were using their smartphones and what they were using them, if they were using them out in the backcountry. Um, I found out that all individuals had a smartphone, uh, cell phone device. Um, and the cool thing, uh, an interesting part, is that only two participants reported that they left their phones off and in their car at all time. The rest of the individuals that I interviewed kept their phones with them all the time while in the backcountry. And then these individuals kind of varied, so I found out that about more than half of them, 51%, left their phones um, in airplane mode, which is recommended by the avalanche standards, uh, avalanche safety standards while about 49% left their phones on at all times, so able to receive and send messages at any time. Uh, this is probably due because um, cell phone reception out in Hatcher Pass is fairly well, um, but it was hard to find out. Um, they asked individuals what would they like to see more, like if they wanted to see an increase in cell phone reception, and more than half, so 60% reported that they wanted to see either a tower or something out there to bump up and boost uh, cell phone reception. I also asked them uh, why was these reasons. A lot of it was emergency reasons. Their phones are usually the re uh, their main source of emergency contact. So if something happens, they want to be able to contact people. Um, and then I asked individuals what they were using their phones for. The majority said uh, camera, so taking pictures and all that fun stuff. Um, a couple were using apps, either GPS or oh, some of those fun uh, um, backcountry stuff. And then uh, we then asked individuals about their social media accounts and how they were using it and if they were using it while in the backcountry. Um, as I mentioned, I found out that 77% said they had a social media account. Uh, Facebook, like usual, being the most popular with Instagram coming in second. Uh, and then asked individuals who were following these social media accounts, uh, um, Avalanche centers. Uh, 48 reported to follow Hatcher Pass. Um, and as I said, Hatcher Pass has both a Facebook and a Twitter. Um, and I also found out they have an Instagram as well. So there's three platforms of social, social media. Um, right here is another advisory that they posted on social media. This is kind of the community of the amount of people that are followed um, and all that stuff. Uh, then we asked uh, people about po if they posted on their social media account about their backcountry travels. Uh, we found that most people said about 45% of them post either some type of information or just general stuff about exploring the backcountry. However, this was a little hard to find out because we're, people were a little hesitant to um, share their social media usage. Nobody wants to be that guy that posts too much or, you know, nobody wants to be that person that's like, yeah, yeah, I do it all the time. So it was definitely a little hard to get that information from people, especially <laughs> if they were around a lot of their friends or, a lot, uh, you know, no, so yeah. And then the, we, took a little, uh, we took a deeper look between experience and sharing information back to the Avalanche Center. Um, this was um, pretty fun to check out. 
Um, we found out that 27% 27, 27 of participants report to post on social media, which is this uh, gold color right here. Uh, these individuals were, you know, 10 of these individuals were novice, three were intermediate experience-wise, and 14 were um, experienced. Um, while 20 participants reported that they contributed information back to the Avalanche centers, either being observations, pictures, or some stuff. That's these guys up here. And then uh, nine participants reported to post both on social media and uh, provide information back, and that's these guys right here. Uh, these individuals were similar to the 20 participants. Their age, uh, their age range was from 28 to 68 years old, um, average age being 39. Uh, most of them reported to have 10 plus years of experience and in at least the minimum they said they had at least five years of experience. So what we found out is that people with more experience were more likely to provide information back to the Avalanche Center, which is these guys right here, while people with less experience were more likely to provide information back to uh, or just provide information to social media. And that's hard to say whether it was actually involving Avalanche safety stuff or just general posting, which is these guys right here. So knowing that, we kind of, uh, as I said, I'm still working with this project. This is uh, my senior project. Um, right now, we're kind of looking at the other side of social media. So that was kind of people's usage of social media. Well, right now, we're taking a look at how Avalanche centers are using social media to either communicate or provide information back to the uh, people in the public. Um, the avalanche centers that I'm taking a look at right now are Chugach, Hatcher Pass, uh, Northwestern Avalanche Center, Colorado, uh, Sawtooth, and Gallatin National Forest. Um, each, each of these were specifically chosen because of the, either their location, you know, obviously Colorado and Northwestern are located in very popular states, while well, Alaska is a little bit more remote, so, super, uh, so I kind of want to see, compare and contrast what's going on between and how each one is using different um, platforms to communicate with their people. Uh, we are running some kind of, we're looking, we looked at March specifically to kind of see if there's any correlations between their um, le levels of danger versus their social media posts. So if as level goes up, does their social media goes up as well. And we, spit, we picked March for that section right now. And the reason for that is because March had the most variability in the season. Early in the season, you kind of have a lot of snow and you get a lot of it in between. Towards the end of the season, it kind of gets into that pre spring season. So there's a lot of variability, which makes it su uh, super interesting to look at as weather patterns change up and down. Um, we also are following up with interviews with these organizations to kind of see their trends and what they're doing to improve uh, or if they're using social media to start to communicate with people. Um, so yeah, the general information that I'm finding out with these guys right now is that uh, each, each, in, each center has a social media account. Um, so the most common ones for them are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, the majority of them have at least these two, or these three, while YouTube is kind of a rarity, but some people do have it. Um, all centers have been seeing a positive increase in followers compared to last year. I believe Gallatin's have about a 36% increase in social media followers. Um, um, but the one thing that we're kind of uh, finding out is obviously Alaska is way different than the lower 48. So for reception is a little bit uh, more sparse and a little spotty up here and it's harder to communicate with people using that stuff. As I said, over in Hatcher Pass, you don't get cell phone service ever. Same with uh, Turnigan. So that's the one thing. And the same, that, the one thing that we kind of are uh, finding out as well is that social media works when people use it. As I mentioned up here, it's not as common as in the lower 48. As I've been talking to these organizations, we found out that um, in Alaska, uh, users don't use social media as a way to talk to uh, the forecasting centers or to look up the forecast centers. Um, so yeah, that's been uh, pretty interesting to see. And uh, Instagram seems to be the most popular method. Um, in my personal opinion, the reason for that, for that is their uh, simplicity. So it's super easy to kind of just like, it's all images. So it's super simple and quick and easy to look at um, for that. Um, and Twitter is also something that a lot of people have mentioned is Twitter is a quick way to contact people. It's kind of like an instant text message to all your followers. So if you post something, people are going to get it instantly. And uh, some of the uh, forecast centers have been using that to their advantage to communicate with other people. 
Um, and then obviously Facebook, the reason we chose Facebook is Facebook is kind of the original, what everybody thinks of when they think of social media, Facebook is the very first one that comes up into the idea. So here's a couple examples that we've found out so far from this project. Um, it's been pretty interesting and we know what, as I've been interviewing individuals, these are kind of the comments that they've been mentioning about using social media to talk to, these, uh, talk to them. Um, so some of the notes, you know, videos are becoming very popular. Uh, Gallatin mentioned that they get the, you know, the meet and greet. These are just quick and easy to kind of get people hooked to go back to the forecast information. Um, another one, as I mentioned, Twitter's a good use for, is uh, posts are super helpful to warn people when accidents happen. So Gallatin right here, you can see they have cornices prob cornice problems, while Chugach on a, they also have some problems, um, some issues came up that spiked up the level of uh, the, the danger level. So that was a quick way to get people um, to know them instantly that, hey, the dangers are rising. So it's a quick way to get people to know what's going on because sometimes it's hard. You know, these instant storms happen. It's a great way to allow people to get. Um, and also allows people to kind of communicate with the forecast centers. You can see here, you know, people are commenting on Gallatin's about all the stuff that's going on, which obviously includes people are pretty interested in what's happening. Um, and we found out that Chugach really, uh, Chugach has been using hashtags, which are a common thing in Instagram. Um, so it kind of uh, allows people to kind of set, stand, uh, set things to look at when they are checking out um, forecasting sites. Um, yep. So what does this all mean? Obviously, um, social media and smartphone usage have been increasing throughout the years. Um, smartphones have become more than just phones. A lot of them, a lot of us rely on as our phones, anything else. So they're GPSs, cameras, mini computers, and much more. While social media, it kind of allows people to communicate with thousands of people in less time than usual. You know, social media and smartphones are here. We kind of, you know, as things continue to adjust, we got to start using them a little bit more. Um, to provide information and contact with people. Um, for future works, we kind of would like to work with other areas outside of Hatcher Pass, so probably Turnigan Pass, Thompson Pass, um, as, re as well as potentially adding other uh, areas to other states to interview, so either Colorado, Northwestern, or other popular states, and kind of see what the people there are doing compared to Alaska. Um, and as I said, right now we're kind of working on seeing what avalanche centers are doing to you and their use of social media. Um, so yeah, and with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Alaska Pacific University Snow Science Program, State Park, everyone who donated pictures, all the participants of the Spring 2018 uh, project, and all the and all the avalanche centers participating in the current Fall 2018 project. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do any of you guys have any questions? Sweet. Uh, all right. I think that's a no. Yeah. If you guys have any questions. Oh. Did you learn anything about social media use in Europe while you were there? Yeah. So um, I definitely did. Um, Europe is. They are very techy. I guess. They really like to use social media. A lot of the, after I presented my project, a lot of people kind of talked to me and were mentioning how they're using social media a lot to kind of communicate. And their big issue is the fact that a lot of um, a lot of the forecasters are a little bit older. And um, as I mentioned, a lot of a lot of the forecasters didn't grow up with social media, so they kind of had to learn and adjust to social media. Well, a lot of the younger generations kind of grew up with it and kind of know what works and what doesn't work because it's just been with us. So that's the one thing they've been finding issues and been trying to improve on and how they've been using it is yeah it's been super helpful for them i feel sweet